Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a real treat from Australian eloquence. It is Charles McCarris's Kaleidoscope. Yes, an orchestral extravaganza, which is what this says. It is an orchestral extravaganza. Actually, you may have the Charles, I'm waving this around, the Charles McCarris Kaleidoscope that was issued on Mercury Living Presence. This is not quite the same. And in order to understand the difference, I'm going to tell you what was and what wasn't on it. Then we'll talk a little bit about the performances. This will be short and sweet and splendid. I mean, Decca Eloquence does wonderful work. That Mercury Living Presence disc was a treat. Now, Charles McCarris was an extremely popular conductor among record labels because he was really good. And you know, one of the things, it's funny, this is a disc of, well, let's just talk about what's on it, okay? And you'll know what I mean. Then we can, then we can do the commentary part. It starts with, let me see, which was the easier way to read this thing? Uh, yes. Well, this is maybe easier. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. The Radetzky March. Da -da 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 bum 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 Okay, fine. You know it. And then the overtures to Deflater Mouse and Die Zigeuner Baron, the Gypsy Baron by Johann Strauss. Those were not on the Mercury Living Presence kaleidoscope. This is the Jumbo Economy kaleidoscope. I mean, that's really what it is. It's the enlarged, new and improved, extra, extra spiffy kaleidoscope. And then we have Brahms Hungarian Dances, numbers 1, 20, and 21. And 20 and 21 were not on the original kaleidoscope. Then there's Offenbach, the Overture, and Can Can from Orpheus in the Underworld. I love the Can Can. That was the music my mother used to dust to. That was dusting music. When mom was dusting, she played the can-can. And I cannot listen to it without actually, um, you know, thinking of mom prancing about the house dusting. Thank you, mom. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. Ah, Tchaikovsky, the Mazeppa Cossack dance. Uh, Smetna, the, the bartered bride dance of the comedians. Uh, Otto Nikolai's The Merry Wives of Windsor. Uh, let's see, Weber's Abu Hassan, Ambrose Thomas Mignon, Supe's The Jolly Robbers, The Banditenstreicher. Yeah, very jolly. And then we also have more Weber, Invitation to the Dance, Meyerbeer's The Prophet, Coronation March, and Glinka's Hota Aragonesa, Caprice Brillant. Oh, God, that's a wonderful work. If you don't know that, the Glinka Hota Aragonesa, also known as Spanish Overture Number no. One, or whatever you want to call it, it is amazing. And you know, when you consider when he wrote these things it was like the 1840s. It's the forerunner of Chabrier's Espana and works like that. And it is so gloriously orchestrated. And the entire Russian school is contained in this this little tiny piece that in Kamarinskaya. You know, these pieces by Glinka, quite short but they are a, a clinic in what Russian music was going to sound like later in the century. Anyway, that is what's on this. And I have told you what was not on the original Kaleidoscope. But in addition to all of that, there, this is with the London Symphony, with the London Proms Orchestra, which is, you know, well, it's all the same people. It doesn't matter. You get even more stuff. We get Grieg's two elegiac melodies, those are wonderful, beautiful, beautiful tunes. And then two Nordic melodies. Um, they are the, the uh, let's see, the, the something, the cow keeper. Oh, gosh, are they cows? Do they have to be cows? I'm looking at it to see what they are. Yes, the cow keeper's tune. You know, it's always cows and goats and sheep and pigs and far barnyard animals. The cow keeper's tune is very pretty. And the country dance. And then from lyric pieces. Lyric pieces. Oh, my God. Wedding Day at Trollhagen. Now, Wedding Day at Trollhagen has one of those tunes that will get stuck in your head for the rest of your life. Listen to it with caution. Because once it gets stuck there, it never comes out again. I was trapped by Wedding Day at Trollhagen for about a week and a half. I could not get it out of my head. I mean, it's still there. Oh, God, it gets stuck in your head.
a great tune. And then Sibelius, the Vols Triste, two pieces from King Christian. And let's see, oh, the incidental, the Entre Act from Peleus and Melisande. Oh, God, I love that piece. You know, ta 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 I know, you don't want me to sing. It's wonderful. And then finally, Finlandia, also known as the soundtrack to Die Hard, in case you were wondering what else it was used for. Now, let's talk about the performances. McCarris was beloved of record labels because he was just a great conductor who could go into the studio. He was as comfortable in the studio as he was in the concert hall. And he said something in these booklet notes that is so freaking intelligent. It is absolutely the secret of his success. And I can attest to the fact that he really believed it because I talked to him more than a few times and we discussed these things. And he said much the same thing to me, but here it's in writing. And so I would much rather uh, not report it at third hand, but to see what he said, because you've just got just to gotta hear this. It was so, so smart. This is what McCara says. He says, if you have a first-class orchestra, then there isn't a great deal to do as a symphonic conductor. Just let the music speak for itself. Aha! Conductors who have no experience at conducting in the opera house um, tend to make a great deal of, of fuss about the effect they have on on uh, various orchestras. Then he says, he says, a lot of them should come into the opera house and see what problems of conducting are really like. Yeah, yeah. Remember when I said well, most orchestras are better than most conductors? The first person who would agree with that is McCarris. And he understood, he understood more than anybody that a great deal of the conductor's job is just to get out of the way and let the musicians do what they're trained to do because they know how to do it. It's their natural inclination to be in tune and together and on time and to keep the rhythm and to let the climaxes sing and to, and to balance things correctly. They know. Most conductors have no clue, and McCarris understood that, and he let his musicians play. And he knew he'd get the credit for it anyway, so what difference does it make? That doesn't mean he's not an interventionist. It doesn't mean he doesn't interpret. Listen to the Fleeter Mouse Overture on this thing. It's full of all of that Viennese lilt and rubato and all the stuff that you do with, you know, with, 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 da 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 but, da, 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 you know, he does all of those things, but they sound natural. It's what the orchestra wants to do, the way the music is supposed to go, and he doesn't get in the way. When the climaxes happen, he finds the right tempo and just lets the music unfold. And really, I think, so many conductors, so many conductors are betrayed when they have to conduct light music because the great ones conduct light music like it's the greatest stuff in the world, which some of it is, actually. And McCarris does it. And it's wonderful. And I'm not saying he does it by, you know, he says, let the music speak for itself. We know the music never speaks for itself. There's always a guiding intelligence behind it. And in this case, it's his guiding intelligence. But he knows when to intervene. And that, my friends, is the word of a master. So, with that in mind, I cannot recommend highly enough on DECA, Australian Eloquence, Charles McCarris's Kaleidoscope, a fabulous two-disc set of light bonbons played to a fairly well by one of the great, really great conductors of the 20th and beginning of the 21st centuries. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me. Take care.